Merry Christmas week to you. Not a topic I thought we would have on this Monday morning, but still one worth talking about. Good Monday morning. I never dreamed that on the week of Christmas, I would be talking about the lukewarm church, the Laodicean church. But then as I thought about it, it kind of does seem appropriate. On this week that we celebrate the greatest gift we've ever been given, why wouldn't we want to discuss something that would cause us to miss the value in it? And that's where we find ourselves with the Laodicean church, the lukewarm church, if you will. Laodicea was a very self-sufficient people in the middle of a very commercial center. They kind of were uh, people very focused on self. And this is how Jesus addresses them to the angel of the church, God's yes. This is how he describes himself, the faithful and accurate with witness. Um, if somebody was gonna testify you as a witness in court to your character, Jesus is saying there would be no more faithful or accurate witness than him in regards to you and to me. The first of God's creation says this, I know you inside and out, and I find little to my liking. Wouldn't that be a sad witness to hear? You're not cold, you're not hot. Far better to be either cold or hot. You're stale, you're stagnant. When I thought about that word stagnant, because I've said often, we're always moving, whether we're moving backwards or forwards, we're always moving. And I thought, but stagnant water doesn't move. But then I thought about this, when a water is stagnant, that is when all kind of bacteria grows. So even in a stagnant water, a water that's just sitting there with no movement, something still grows. And what's growing in a stagnant water are things that lead to death and disease. You're stale, you're stagnant. Listen to this, you make me want to vomit. That means God cannot stomach a stagnant heart, a stagnant church. You brag, I'm rich. I've got it made. I need nothing from anyone. Oblivious that in fact, you're a pitiful, blind beggar, threadbare and homeless. Many of us think we've got everything we need. We've got it all together. We can do it ourselves. We can make it on our own. We're self-sufficient people. We can pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We can make it happen. And Jesus says when we live that way, that we are really pity pitiful. One says pitiable. We're blind and we're naked. We're threadbare and we're homeless. Meaning we are really unable to see the true state of our condition. Here's what I want you to do. And what I love about all of these letters is he's always pointing us back to a place of hope, a place that retrieves what the enemy has tried to steal, whether through his deception or his seduction. God is such a merciful God. Even when you read the whole rest of the book of Revelation, he's always coming back to an announcement, whether it's through an angel, whether it's through 144,000 witnesses, whether it was through the birth of his son, Jesus Christ. There's always an announcement back to the heart of the Father that there is hope when we repent and turn our hearts back. He says, here's what I want you to do. 
Buy your gold from me. Don't buy your gold from this world. Don't think the world has the things of real value. Because it doesn't. Not our success, not our bank account, not our relationships, not our degrees. Those are not where value lies. The value lies in buying our gold from our Heavenly Father. I don't know why I'm thinking about this and I may go over long today, but I'm just gonna share it because I can't get away from it. So I'm just gonna trust the Spirit of God. Often when people get divorced, especially women, they kind of develop this um, stick to itiveness, this fortitude, this defiance that says, I'm never going to depend on a man again for my income. I'm gonna make sure I can pave a way for myself. While there's nothing wrong with being able to make a living, there is something wrong when we try to think we're going to figure something out. I remember right after my divorce, I didn't have much money and I didn't know how I was gonna afford a home, a place to live. And I was given the offer of a brand new book deal. It was a three book book deal. It was a substantial income that I could have kind of put away and lived on for a season until I could have figured out how to make a living. And the Lord said, you're not to take that book deal. And I was like, uh, hello, Lord, do you know where I am? Do you know, uh, would you like to see my checking account? Because I know you're like omniscient and all, and you can like be everywhere, and you can see everything. And so it was so clear, do not take that book deal when everything in me knew, in the natural, I needed it. Do you know what? I was obedient to the Lord. I didn't take the book deal, even though I was petrified and didn't understand why. But do you know what? The Lord supernaturally provided for me. And it was in that year that I wrote Flying Solo Without Knowing It. I wrote Reclaiming Your Heart Without Knowing It. And a whole ministry was birthed from being obedient to the gold that only God can give. We are not rich separate of Him. He has gold that money can't buy. He can sustain you when you don't even have a paycheck coming in through the, through the paycheck stub. He can provide a way. He says, buy your gold from me, gold that's been through the refiner's fire. That means it is gold that is lasting. It is gold that has come through the fire and endured. Then you'll be rich then you'll know what true wealth is. Do you know that when I am in the hardest seasons of my life, I can always go back to when I was tried in the refiner's fire and I came out with gold more precious than rubies that I know he will take care of me in this fire. Then I, you will be rich. Buy your clothes from me, clothes designed in heaven. You've gone around half naked long enough and buy medicine for your eyes from me so you can see, really see. The people I love, I call you to account. So why is God looking at us and saying that we're a lukewarm church? Because he loves us. The accurate and faithful witness loves us enough to say what is accurate, to call things as they are out of his great love. Prod and correct and guide so that they'll live at their best. He wants us at our best. A lukewarm church is not at their best. A lukewarm heart is not, as, not at its best. Up on your feet then, about face, what's that mean? That means repent. That means turn in a different way. Run after God. Look at me. I stand at the door and knock. If you hear me call and open the door, I'll come right in and sit down to supper with you. Conquerors will sit alongside me at the head table, just as I, having conquered, took the place of honor at the side of my father. 
That's my gift to the conqueror. Are your ears awake? Listen, listen to the wind words, the spirit blowing through the churches. Behold, I stand at the door and knock today. If anyone opens the door, I'll come and sit down with him. God is knocking on our doors today. Just like he knocked on the heart of the world 2,000 years ago. The only ones that can open it are you and I. But when we do, he promises that no matter what the table looks like, and I don't know what your Christmas table will look like this year, you may be dreading even the people coming to sit around your table. It may be the messiest of the messiest, but he says if you open the door, I'll come and sit down at the table with you. He came and sat down at that table 2,000 years ago. And on this Monday morning, you and I get to, get to decide if he gets to come sit at ours. If your heart was encouraged today, please know that we have many other resources available for you. You can discover all of those at reclaiminghearts.org.